Hi, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing seven proven strategies to make a man fall deeply in love with you. Hi, I'm Matt Schaefer, your empowerment, connection, and relationship coach, and I'm a former attorney who's committed his life to supporting you and having this sort of fun, fulfilling, dynamic connections and relationships with men that you are so worthy of, and I am so excited about the topic we're going to be diving into today. I'm going to be sharing with you seven proven, tried and true strategies that you can use with any guy, no matter if you're dating or in a long-term relationship or single as a Pringle, <laughs> that are going to help activate him to want to emotionally invest in you and fall deeply, madly in love with you. And the reason I can say that these are proven strategies is because I've used them <laughs> as a dating and relationship coach with thousands of women one-on-one -on -one and in my group programs. And also, I've fallen in love with women who have used them on me. <laughs> so I've seen it on both ends of the spectrum, and I promise they're going to work for you too. But before before we go there, please take a second, hit that little subscribe button, and don't forget to click that link in the comments and caption because I have created some amazing free gifts that are going to make a huge difference in your connections and relationships with men. And be sure to stay tuned towards the end of this video where I'm going to be sharing some special bonus tips that are going to make you absolutely irresistible to high value men. Now, this first secret is one that is completely universally applicable, no matter if it's someone you just met or someone you've been with for 50 years, and that is show genuine interest in his life and his passions. Nothing makes a man feel more seen and appreciated than feeling like the woman that he's interested in actually cares or wants to care about the things that he cares about. Does this make sense? So it's one of the greatest gifts you can give a man is to be curious about who he is, what makes him tick, and really dive into it. So how do we do that, right? We do that through questions. <laughs> and there's a quote that I came up with that basically says that the depth and quality of your relationship will be determined by the depth and quality of the questions you ask your man. Truly, right? So are you showing him that you actually care about the things that he's interested in? Are you willing to learn about them? Do you really want to know who he truly is, right? These are the sort of things that will turn a guy on in ways that you cannot possibly imagine. Uh, so for example, say he's into tennis, like I am, <laughs> right? I am obsessed with tennis, and, and if a woman that I'm seeing, if a woman that I'm dating, if she is willing to watch tennis with me, if she's willing to ask about the scoring, wanna sit down with me and, and watch a full match, like I love that because it gives me a chance to talk about something I'm passionate about, and it helps me really feel like she wants to participate in something that means a lot to me. And a kind of an added bonus, right, of really taking the time to engage in and be interested in something that a man really cares about is that you get to have shared experiences with him. You know, and I've had beautiful uh, experiences with partners in my in my life where we've watched like a really memorable tennis match together and gone through the highs and lows of it and rooted for the same person or rooted for different people. And those shared experiences become part of what's going to deepen your relationship with him. Does that make sense? So take the time to learn about and care about and be curious about what he's into and watch him fall deeper and deeper in love with you. It works, I promise. Now, secret two is one that is super sexy to us guys, and that is to be confident and independent. Now, I know that sounds simple, right? But what is the temptation that a lot of women face when they get into a new relationship or they start dating someone new? It's to lose themselves in their connection with their partner and just sort of assimilate into their lives. Can you relate to that? <laughs> I know I can. I've been on both ends of it. But one of the most attractive things you can do with a guy that you're dating is to maintain your hobbies, your interests, your passions, your own life. It demonstrates that you see yourself as high value and that you're not going to rely upon him for your happiness. And that's a really, really, really important point. You don't want to make your happiness or your sense of fulfillment his responsibility just because he's someone you're dating or he's someone that you're in relationship with, right? Because when you're doing that, what are you making that relationship feel like to him? You're making it feel like work. <laughs> and this speaks to a core point of what the masculine is craving from the feminine. The masculine is craving freedom. One of the great ways to create polarity with the feminine between the masculine is to be a source, a source of freedom and happiness and joy and expansion for men and uh, to be freedom from the heaviness of his career, of his job, and of those aspects of his life. 
So maintaining your own autonomy and being responsible for your own happiness and fulfillment is actually going to make him attracted to you and admire you more. Plus, it's going to take any pressure off of him that might kill the polarity that's building between the two of you as you get to know each other. I hope that makes sense. So what does this look like in practice? It means as you're getting to know a guy and you're dating a guy, it's maintaining your hobbies. It's going out and traveling. It's doing yoga, painting, whatever your stuff is. Don't let your relationship supersede or be uh, prioritized over the things that light you up. When he sees you maintaining your own life as you get to know him, it's going to make him want to be a deeper part of your life. So do that and I promise he's going to fall deeper for you than you can possibly imagine. Now, secret number three is a huge one for cultivating deep loyalty emotionally with a guy that you are dating, and that is to be unconditionally supportive of him and what he's up to in the world. And this speaks to one of the core things that the masculine is craving from the feminine is that we want to be seen and acknowledged for what we are up to in the world, what we are doing, what we are building, right? So one of the greatest roles you can play in our lives to help us emotionally invest in you is that of the cheerleader. But here is the thing. It must be unconditional for it to be effective. So, of course, we want you to acknowledge us and to support us when we're going for that big promotion or when we're competing in that Ironman or we're doing these big things in our life and we're being successful with them. But here is the trick, is that you can't just be supportive of a guy when he's succeeding. If you really want him to fall in love with you, deeply and profoundly and madly, it's also important that you support him and you cheerlead him and that you show that you believe in him when he's struggling, <laughs> when he's failing, when he's in his dark night of the soul. Because I can tell you this from personal experience, a lot of men have a story that the only value they bring to relationship is what when they're succeeding. That the value we have is as a provider and it's only that we only matter, that we're only enough in relationship when we're winning. And if we're not winning, we're a failure and we can't provide. Therefore, we have no value in relationship. So if you're able to like unconditionally be there for a guy when he's struggling, when he gets fired, when he has a health challenge, when he has all this different stuff coming up in his life, he's going to understand, oh my gosh, she actually cares about me and wants to be in relationship with me for who I am not just for what I'm doing in the world. And that is something that is so profoundly meaningful that it will make a man fall deeply and madly in love with you uh, more often than not. So I encourage you, with any guy that you're getting to know, like let him know with the big things and the little things and everything in between, how much you appreciate what he's up to in the world. Support him with the stuff that he's doing and give him that positive feedback and he's gonna appreciate it. It's gonna mean so much to him. Now, secret number four is a very seductive one and a very powerful one, and that is keep the mystery alive. And when I say that, I don't mean be deceptive. I don't mean like hide the ball from him or don't tell him who you are, but let him discover who you are over time, right? Give him some information about you, share aspects of yourself, but don't try to lay it all on him all at once. For example, Please don't share with him your entire relationship history on the first date. So when I was 16, I dated Jake and Jake was on the football team and you know what? He didn't treat me right at all. So then when I was 17, I broke up with Jake and then I dated Dylan and Dylan was actually even worse. And I realized that Dylan reminded me a lot of my dad because my dad, you know, he was like not a nice guy at all and he did this and this and this. And so that was really bad. So then when I was 18, I dated, can you see how that would be really overwhelming? to uh, to any guy who's just getting to know you. Like, let a man uncover and unravel the mystery of you over the course of weeks and months because the key thing you want to remember here is that men create value over time with the investment of their time and energy. So by allowing a man to sort of uncover the puzzle of you over the course of weeks and months and subsequent dates and adventures that you go on together, you're helping him uh, see you in a higher and higher and higher way and see you as a higher and higher value woman. So I hope that makes sense and that you're able to sort of like meter out the way that you share yourself with the guys that you're getting to know because uh, it's really gonna help them develop much deeper emotional investment in you.
Now, secret number five is one of my personal favorites and absolutely one of the most important ones on this list, and that is to be playful and fun. I am telling you, there are a few things that are gonna turn a man on and open his heart to you more than making him laugh and sharing and co-creating fun experiences and adventures with him. Because you gotta remember this core point, inside every man is a little boy. A little boy who is dying to play. He wants to get out, he wants to get out of the heaviness of his life, and you can be that loving interruption to that heaviness and an invitation for him to step into play. We have a very high play drive that if you can activate that, it's going to deepen your connection with him and set you apart from any other woman who's just going on typical dinner and a movie dates or whatever, or just the typical boring dates. Like make a man laugh, have fun with him, and it's gonna like turn him on in ways that he was not expecting. So don't be afraid to, to tease a guy about something that you find silly about him or break out into a spontaneous dance party in the middle of the kitchen or invite him on like a fun date to an amusement park or somewhere else fun. I'll never forget, uh, I went on a date recently where uh, we went to an arcade and I wasn't sure you know, uh, how she would respond to going to an arcade because that's kind of like a masculine place, right? And the moment we got on the air hockey table, she got this look in her eyes and she started talking smack and started playing super aggressively. And I can tell she wanted to win so bad and I immediately started laughing and I was so happy and activated by that because I knew we were gonna have a great time throwing down. Her competitive, fiery nature and her willingness to like go all in, it was very activating to me and we ended up having an amazing night. So ladies, don't be afraid to play with your guy and I promise you it will help open his heart and help him fall for you big time. Now secret number six is a foundational aspect of any healthy and sustainable relationship with a guy and that is to be passionate and affectionate with him. And this speaks to one of the core truths about most men, that touch is a primary love language for us, whether we know it or not. So my question to you is, are you consistently demonstrating affection and passion in the way you're showing up physically with a guy that you're dating? Because for a lot of men, myself included, physical intimacy is a core expression of emotional intimacy. And I don't mean just sex. I mean casual touching. I mean petting. Like literally, if I'm on a date and I'm driving and the woman that I'm on the date with is like petting my arm or running her nails on the back of my neck, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven and I have no problem being her chauffeur from one end of the country to the other. It's all good. So if you want to cultivate deep emotional intimacy with a guy and help him open up his heart to you, touch him more. Not necessarily sexually, but just touch him casually. Kiss him deeply when he's not expecting it. You know, hold his hand in situations where he wouldn't necessarily think that that's something that you would do. You know, like let him know that you want to be in physical connection with him uh, at multiple times in different situations and scenarios. And he's going to start to feel more emotionally safe with you, believe it or not. So trust me, it's a really powerful tool. It's one of the most important things for me in any relationship that I'm in and for most men it's going to be the same. And the last point I want to make around passion and physical touch is the importance of consistency over time. Because I know for a lot of relationships, it can be really easy to be physical in the beginning, right? There's lots of cuddling, there's lots of touch. And then over time, you know, you start to pull away and maybe you just don't think it's as important or whatever. And in those situations, if a man gets used to a lot of physical touch and he really loves it, and then he starts to lose it, it can feel like a little bit of a bait and switch and it can cause a man to emotionally check out uh, from the relationship because for a lot of guys, we really struggle to ask for what we need. You know what I'm saying? So instead of him asking for more touch from you, he's a lot of times just going to pull back a little bit and maybe put some walls up and we all know we don't want that. So be consistent with touch and with your passionate connection with him over time and watch your relationship deepen in amazing ways. And tip number seven is absolutely critical if you want to build a deep emotional connection with a guy and get him to fall for you, and that is to communicate openly and honestly. Trust is the foundation of 
any emotional connection that you're going to build with a man. So it is so important that whatever is coming up for you emotionally or in your own life, that you communicate that to him honestly and transparently so that he can understand that you are someone that he can feel emotionally safe with, right? So if something is bothering you, if you've got something on your heart that especially that has to do with him, don't try to suppress it or hide it and assume that he's not going to be able to tell because I have some surprising news for you, my dear. <laughs> Men are often a lot more intuitive than women give us credit for, right? Because when we were kids, we were constantly tuning to our mothers and trying to figure out are we in trouble or not, right? We have a lot of greater intuitive radar when it comes to women's thoughts and feelings than a lot of times women give us credit for, right? So when you are struggling with something, especially if it has to do with him, but you don't tell him about it because you think you're hiding it, a lot of times we're feeling it and then we're blaming ourselves for it. Our wounded little boy, our mama trauma <laughs> is getting activated and that's going to cause us often to shut down or pull away from you and blame ourselves for it. And maybe it doesn't have anything to do with us, right? So I invite you to err on the side of just talking to him, just speaking to him honestly about whatever it is that's coming up for you. That way he can recognize that you are a safe place because one of the greatest roles you can play in the life of a man is as his emotional sanctuary. Because I guarantee you, he doesn't have another place to be open, to be vulnerable, and to receive vulnerability uh, emotionally from someone else. He's not doing it with his family. He's not doing it with his friends. And if you can become that person that is an emotion, his emotional sanctuary, he is going to fall madly in love with you. And now I want to share with you some final bonus tips, so just some basic principles based off of what we talked about on this video that I think are so important for you to cultivate this sort of like deep emotional connection with men that you truly want. The first is this, that love is like bread. It's like plants. It's like anything else that's going to expand over time. It needs space to grow. So kind of going back to one of the earlier points I talked about, don't be afraid to give a man space, space to pursue his passions, space for you to go do your thing. Because in the gap between you and him, that is where the love between you is going to grow. And if you're constantly on him, if you're constantly trying to control the dynamic with him, if you're not giving him room to breathe, room to miss you and different aspects like that, you're going to suffocate and smother uh, love, especially in the beginning, okay? So don't be afraid to cultivate conscious, sacred space between you and the guy you're dating. That's really going to help you uh, build a deep foundation for lasting love with him. And another core concept that I talked about in this video that I have to emphasize again is that every man is a little boy. We all want to play. We all want to tease and be teased at some level. We all want to just let put down the heaviness of the rest of our life and just go play in the effing sandbox. So the more opportunities and invitations you give us to play in the ways that we like to play, which means you got to learn those things, right? The more opportunities you give us to play and invitations, the more free we're going to feel with you and the more we're going to fall in love with you. And I want you to remember at the end of the day that freedom is the greatest gift that you can give the masculine. Freedom is something that you can create through touch. It's something you can create through play. It's something you can create through adventures, through invitations. There's a million different ways for you to create emotional and physical freedom for a guy that you're dating or in relationship with. So my question to you is, how are you cultivating and inviting the man or men in your life to step into freedom? Because if you're not creating freedom from them, for them, guess what you're creating? Heaviness. And heaviness is the killer of polarization in relationship. And a last point and disclaimer here, because I'm not one of those manipulate a man this way to make him obsessed with you. I'm not that guy, right? This is not about manipulating a man or pretending to be someone that you're not. This is about showing up as your best, most authentic, most unapologetic self and giving a man an opportunity to fall in love with your deepest truth. Like if you look at all the tips I just shared with you, they're all basically inviting you to be authentic, be vulnerable, be present, be connected, right? To get out of your head and into the moment with a guy that you're looking to connect with and get to know so he can see you and either fall for you or not. Because here's the thing. If you do all the tips that I talked about in this video and a guy's like, meh, I don't, I don't think so. Like if that's what he does, guess what, buttercup? 
it doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It just means that he's not yo man. And, and that's a great thing to know because then you can lovingly release him. You don't want to try to force a man who's not in alignment with you to love you. Am I right? Much better to just release him so you can free up the space and bandwidth for the man who truly sees and appreciates your authentic expression and wants to be in relationship with you and claim you in the way that you're worthy of. Am I right? Yes, I know I'm right. Because if you take anything away from this video, I want it to be this, that your ideal partner is out there and he is waiting for you to show up out there in the world as your most authentic, vibrant, magnetic expression so he can find you, see you, and claim you in the way that you so deeply desire. So get out there, have fun with it, and watch the magic unfold in your life if you apply these tips. So I hope you enjoyed seven foolproof secrets on how to uh, get a man to fall deeply, madly in love with you. If you apply these tips, let us know in the comments how they work for you. We love to hear from all you guys and get get the comments going and the conversation going down below and be sure to click that link in the comments and caption get some amazing free gifts that are going to make a huge difference in your connections and relationships with men and be sure to stay tuned for this next video where i'm going to be sharing with you 10 signs that a man is emotionally investing in you so if you're doing these things watch you're going to be able to watch this next video and see things that he's going to do back to you in the way he's showing up that are going to let you know that he's falling deeply in love with you. So enjoy that video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye-bye. Number one is they embrace your flaws with open arms and a smile. And this reminds me of a really great quote that we come to love not by finding a perfect person, 